Welcome back to the Almost Shameless podcast. I am your host, Tanya Ray Fox. Thank you for joining me. This week, the Patriots have already played on Thursday night. So for this recording, I'm actually fresh off of a game for the first time in forever. So that's really exciting. Obviously, last week we did mid-season awards for the Patriots, and I think that this week is a good week to break down exactly where the Patriots are at statistically, what exactly we're seeing on a broad scale at this point from the Patriots beyond just, hey, they look good. Oh my gosh, are they a contender? I want to get into the nitty gritty of what we're actually seeing with the Patriots, how they've gotten here and exactly how they're going to move forward, how we can predict how the rest of the season is going based on what we see right now. I don't want to be vague. I don't want to get into prognostications. I want to talk about real tangible evidence that this team is a legitimate contender and why we should feel like that after their week 10 performance and considering the entirety of the season this far. So that will be the main crux of today's episode. Um, there's also the return of Cam Newton. So I am going to start by hitting on that. Just a couple of things, nothing crazy, but obviously we can't ignore that. That's a big deal. And there's, I know there's a lot of Patriots fans who still really root for Cam Newton and want to see him succeed. And we may get that chance this week against the Washington football team, against Ron Rivera. Had he, had he been with the Panthers just a week sooner, we may have ended up seeing him go against the Patriots, but we escaped that. And for me, that's good. Too much emotional baggage with that. We've already had to watch the Patriots play a game against Tom Brady. I don't need a game against Cam Newton as well. So uh, we lucked out on that front. Now we can just, you know, watch him, root for him going forward. Cam Newton is in Tom Brady's division. So if he's got anything left in the tank, which it looks like he might, Who knows how this season could go? It obviously isn't going the way people necessarily expected. There's great teams, but nobody is a real true front runner at this point to win the Super Bowl. So anything could happen. In general, I think this season of the NFL is one of the most exciting we've had in a long time. I think coming off of the COVID season with no fans, it was very predictable, not necessarily in the regular season, because obviously Tom Brady and the, and the Bucks didn't really get their groove going until the, you know, the late November, early December post Thanksgiving part of the season. But, you know, the chiefs were really rolling. That seems like kind of obvious at that point, they were the AFC favorite, the bills gave them a run for their money, but there just wasn't this much parody in the league last year, um, in the, at least in the way that the teams looked, it was just a weird season overall. It was just a hard season to fully invest in, especially for Patriots fans, because it was the transition out of the Tom Brady era. Tom Brady's down in Tampa Bay doing his thing. They are dealing with all the COVID opt-outs and Cam Newton getting COVID and just not a lot of consistency in terms of like the type of team that we'd seen before. And it clearly was a roster that wasn't built to succeed beyond really what they did. So it's much more exciting this season. I think you'll be really interested to hear about where the Patriots really stand specifically defensively in the AFC right now, because believe it or not, not a lot of elite defenses in the AFC. So we're definitely, I'm, I'm really excited to get into that. I'm excited. I really want Kyler Murray to come back for the Arizona Cardinals. You guys know I'm partially an Arizona Cardinals fan. You know, they're, the, they're my NFC team at the very least, uh, Patriots o- over anyone. I would love to see the Patriots beat the Arizona Cardinals in the Super Bowl. That would be amazing. But I want to see Kyler Murray come back. I'm sick of this half-assed version of that team. I want Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins and Chase Edmonds to be back and healthy and see what they can really do. Because right now the pa- power really has shifted to the Packers in the conference. The Cowboys are really on a roll after their stumble against Denver. They just totally destroyed the Falcons. Um, Maybe their destruction of the Falcons looks a little less outrageous considering what the Patriots did to the Falcons on a short week in Atlanta, uh, but still a, a pounding front to back. So they look like real contenders. The Rams have stumbled. And so the power is shifting. I would love to see a healthy Kyler Murray, Arizona team to see what they're really made of in the back half of the season. So hopefully we get that, but enough about the rest of that. Let's just get into the first bit I have for you today, which is some musings on the return 
of Cam Newton. Cam Newton signed with the Panthers just a few days before they had to play the Arizona Cardinals last week. And we didn't know if we were going to see any Cam Newton action. It seemed like it was going to be a PJ Walker game. And he had one of the more epic sort of returns to a team ever. I mean, very rarely do we see a player like Cam Newton go back to the team they started with. I don't know. I can't even think of a I can't even think of somebody on that level that's done it, at least not recently. I mean, he is the most famous, most important player in the history of that franchise. So for him to come back was already going to be epic as it is. But he can't, not only did he come back, but he came into the team with, it's a totally new team, right? It's a new coach, a new offense. This is not the Panthers team that he left. It's not the Ron Rivera Panthers. This is a totally different era of Panthers football. So the uniform is the same, but that's about it. So we didn't know what to expect. Again, we saw Cam Newton was improving over last season when we saw him in Patriots camp. And preseason prior to being cut by the Patriots, but we don't, you know, it's very hard to know what to expect. Like Cam's really kind of had it tough going to new teams is going into the new offense of the Patriots. He learns things. He gets better. He gets cut. Now he's back with the Panthers, but it's a totally different team. It's crazy. And it turns out he's still got a little of that Superman vibe left in him because they brought him in, in the red zone on the second down, his first snap of the 2021 season. And it's a touchdown. And The crowd's going wild. He's got the, you know, taunting penalty for just being excited and yelling into the camera. A taunting penalty that makes zero sense because the NFL has since used that video of him yelling into the camera um, back, this epic moment. They've used it all over their social media. They profited and benefited from the moment for Cam Newton. So again, another absolutely egregious example of why the taunting penalty does does absolutely nothing for football but regardless the next opportunity he has to come in the game second snap of the 2021 nfl season touchdown two touchdowns in two snaps and you can't write this stuff it's absolutely crazy and while obviously these are situations high probability situations for cam to be able to score it's not as easy as it looks we've seen all kinds of gimmicky crap from teams year in after year out with different quarterbacks Taysom hill all these things that teams have tried to do to try to be tricky with two two quarterbacks playing in a game and they don't result in two touchdowns on two snaps and just a reminder that cam newton can do some special stuff And I'm not saying it's a sign that he's going to come in and turn the entire Panther season around, but it's pretty clear in that game that his presence on the team is meaningful and more than just touchdowns. So 14 points in his first game, no problem. He was epic on the sideline, already in huddles, getting his team amped up, taking that leadership role. Epic in the post-game press conferences. I mean, this is a guy who just makes the NFL more fun and more interesting, and it's good to have him back. I am excited to see what he has if he can actually start a full game and after getting a chance to kind of be in the system for a week, learn the playbook, learn some of the offense. I mean, there's going to be some bumps in the road. You can't just come in in the middle of a season like this and stroll through a game. But Matt Rule's an interesting coach, and I do think that there is a chance that this actually can work out for the Panthers. The the division is weird. You know, Brady and the Buccaneers lost that weird game to the Washington football team the week prior. The Saints are very beatable. The Falcons are obviously a liability. So that division is not decided by any means. I told you guys I was looking into the defensive numbers while, while kind of studying where the Patriots are at. That Panthers defense is for real. It is pretty clear at the top of the list which teams have sort of statistically separated themselves defensively. And so far it's been the Packers, the Panthers and the Cardinals. And so they're, you know, he's coming into a good situation to try to make some noise and maybe sneak into a wild card and maybe disrupt the powers that be in the NFC South. So I'm excited to see it. And I'm excited to talk about it next week. Once we've seen him play. Okay. The meat of the podcast, we've got to talk about where the Patriots are at right now, how they got there and why it indicates what's going to happen going forward. There's a lot of sudden panic, Patriots panic going on around the league, right? There's a lot of fans of other AFC teams that are just shaking their head and they're feeling that familiar feeling. They've got that loving feeling coming back, seeing Bill Belichick do what he's doing. It's like you thought it was over and it's just happening all over again. And there's a reason for that. And it's not just because 
they're on a five game win streak. It's not just because they have the most successful rookie quarterback of the class this year. It's not just because Mac Jones is completing 80% of his passes in a lot of these games. It's beyond all of that. It's a much bigger, much more complex picture of what of that Patriot way we always talk about. The Patriot way is thriving, people. It's thriving. It turns out Bill Belichick really was the designer of that mentality because it's working like a charm in 2021 without Tom Brady behind center. Of course, this is no shot at Tom Brady. I'm just saying everything he used to do that worked still works. Okay, let's get into it. Nora Princiati of The Ringer shared this uh, a couple of these stats recently on their NFL podcast. And I want to I want to go over them with you for a quick sec. The Patriots since week seven heading into the game against the Falcons were first in PFF offensive grade in the league, first in PFF defensive grade in the league, first in EPA per play in the league, and second in EPA per play allowed in the league. This is all from week seven through week 10, heading into week 11 against the Falcons. We saw a lot of that play out. Excellent defense, really good effective offense, and just all around good football. Again, Nick Folk coming in. Again, Jake Bailey with the punting. Everything was working as it should. Another really solid, really impressive game on the road. These, these guys play like nobody else in the league right now on the road. And of course, the number one storyline when it comes to the Patriots is always Bill Belichick and the quarterback, Mac Jones. Mac had another super high completion percentage night on Thursday night. And this is the thing with Mac. He doesn't need to throw the ball a ton. And even sometimes it's better that he doesn't have to because it means the run game is balanced and working effectively. And so Mac is okay only throwing 25, 26, 27, 28 times a game, completing 23, 24, 25 of those passes and letting the run game do their job. And you, that's what we love to see. I, you know, Mac, I think is at his best and at his most effective when he is throwing a little less, but getting the opportunities to push the ball down the field a little more. Now that he's had more reps, more experience, we've seen his relationships with Nelson Aguilar and specifically Kendrick Bourne grow. We've seen that connection with Hunter Henry become extremely valuable to their offensive output. And this is all stuff that is week after week getting better and more consistent. You know, what people have to understand in the Mac Jones conversation is that this is a perfect combination of a quarterback who is equipped and ready to be in the NFL. And what happens when a team gives a rookie quarterback structure and a system to work within? Rookie quarterbacks are like kids. They need rules to follow. They need structure. They need discipline. And Mac has gotten that from Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels. He has gotten a system to work in that has slowly but surely opened things up for him, allowed him to do a little bit more. He's earned their trust. They've earned his. And that is a really important part. The symbiotic relationship between coach, player, and team when it comes to rookie quarterbacks is so underrated. You know, there is, of course, the pure talent. We see the pure talent of Justin Fields. We see the pure talent of Trevor Lawrence. They've made some really good NFL football plays, some really high level throws from both of those players. And, and what Justin Fields can do on the ground is also next level, but they don't have what Mac has. And so they, we don't know. We don't know what they would do in Mac's position, what they, if they would thrive the way Mac has, if they would have the self-awareness Mac has. We don't know. I'd like to think that they would, but we don't know. Fortunately, the Patriots have given us that clarity with Mac. They've given us the opportunity to watch him thrive in the setting that he's in. And that is a huge testament to the Patriot way we've always talked about, the do your job, get in there and understand exactly what your role is mentality that the players who succeed on the Patriots always seem to have. I've said this before, but I want to make it very clear. The best thing about Mac is his self-awareness, is his understanding of what he can and can't do, when he can and can't do it, his ability to trust his progress every week to not get gun shy, but also to not get ahead of himself. These are tiny little things that actually add up to being massive parts of why the offense is working with this rookie quarterback. Self-awareness. Think about it. Think about the quarterbacks that you've watched 
over the last 10, 15 years, and even more recently over the last five, 10 years, who really always seem to have a self-awareness, who aren't precious with their talent, who are capable of seeing the forest through the trees with how the offense works and functions at its best, who can identify matchups, who can tell sometimes there's going to be games where you run more. Sometimes there's going to be games where you really challenge the coverages in the secondary. Who are those guys? The self-awareness guys. Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Dak Prescott, Ryan Tannehill. These are guys that seem to understand that the offense runs through them. And so they have a huge responsibility to not only think about their game and what's happening with them on the field. That type of maturity is invaluable on any team, but on the Patriots, it's gold. Understanding matchups, knowing when to really rip things open, being able to feel the momentum and where it's coming from and how to ride that momentum, developing chemistry week to week with your receivers and your offensive line. That all comes down to football intelligence and self-awareness. And Mac every week displays the ability to do all of those things. This wasn't his most impressive game. The second half was tough. It was The second half was much more about Nick Folk hitting his field goals. But this is a game on the road on a Thursday night, four days rest, after a, a really incredible performance against the Browns on Sunday. So I have no problem with some of the little mistakes and the little issues that Mac may have had, you know, I tweeted that night and I, and I do believe this Mac is absolutely an important part, a very, very, very important part of this team. But I do believe that they, this team goes as the defense goes, and we're going to get into that. But I do want to talk a little bit more broadly before we get into the specifics of the defense about what this actually is, what kind of brilliance we're actually seeing from Bill Belichick, because this was one hell of a soft rebuild, right? A year. This is like a year of a soft rebuild, and we're seeing a master class in how to do that. Now, not many teams could pull this off because not many teams are coming off of 19 straight seasons of dominance on the, the likes that the Patriots experienced with Belichick and Brady. But let's, there's still a lot to be learned about what Bill Belichick did to get his team to this point. And a lot of it is stuff that was written off, thrown aside and treated as though it was poor GMing from Bill Belichick. And it turns out it's brilliant. Who would have guessed? So how did Bill Belichick turn a team that had lost Tom Brady, had gone through a COVID ravaged season into a team that is currently seven and four battling for the division in the AFC and a potential problem for every single t other team in the conference? Let's take a look at it. First of all, he kept the right veterans around on the team to carry on the Patriot way, to teach everybody else on that team exactly how things go on every single position group. He did not turn the team over so much that he had to rebuild the culture of the Patriots locker room and what they do in Foxborough. You've got David Andrews on the offensive line. You've got Devin McCourty in the secondary. You've got Dante Hightower and Lawrence Guy with those linebackers in the defensive line. You've got Matt Slater on special teams. You've got Brandon Bolden in that running backs group, obviously without James White this season. You've got Brian Hoyer, who by all accounts is an incredibly smart mentor and teacher for young quarterbacks. So you've got him there with Mac. Then, of course, you nail it with the free agents. The free agents that a lot of people showed a lot of skepticism about heading into this season. Hunter Henry, Matthew Judon, both have been extraordinarily important on their sides of the ball. Adrian Phillips, who's in his second year with the team, who, again, has been really been a huge addition to the secondary at the safety position. Kendrick Bourne and Nelson Aguilar seem to be finding their spot in this offense every single week, Kendrick Bourne specifically, but they are both continuing to figure things out at the wide receiver position, both signings that were pretty maligned heading into the season. And anybody who's really paid attention to the Patriots and what they've done in the postseason with their wide receivers can tell that Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne are primed primed to have really big opportunities and moments if they do make a real playoff run this year. When receivers aren't particularly prolific in the regular season, stats-wise, for the Patriots, sometimes that makes them more dangerous in the playoffs. Danny Amendola, Chris Hogan, some of those years with Julian Edelman, those are guys with a lot of playoff production and regular seasons that wouldn't indicate it go that it would go that way. So, if I were a betting man, I would bet that Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne are going to be continue to get better as the season goes on, but are going to be critical in the playoffs. 
And of course, he's maintained dominance at the kicking position and at punting with Nick Folk and Jake Bailey. So these, this is a beyond just developing a rookie quarterback this quickly. It's an entire way of quickly and very methodically rebuilding a team to be a playoff contender that I don't think any other team is really capable of. I think you could look at a team like the Ravens and see them pulling something like this off, but there are very few other teams I could imagine pulling this kind of season off. And it really is just back to the Patriot way, back to do your job and back to understanding that the right mix of team veterans, free agents, drafting well, which the Patriots, the last two drafts have started to look pretty nice and getting your quarterback is all it takes. And, you know, and that brings us to the defense, which is the bread and butter of this team and has often been the bread and butter of the Patriots uh, when they are looking to separate themselves from other teams in the AFC. So something I found really fascinating is that the Patriots are one of five teams in the NFL who are on the plus side of pro football references, expected points contributed by all defense. One of five teams on the plus side of that statistic. It's the Bills, the Panthers, the Patriots at third, the Cardinals, and the Saints. Everybody else is negative. The Patriots are third in percentage of drives ending in a turnover, just behind the Bills and the Colts. The Patriots defense is a fifth in net yards gained per pass attempt. The Bills are number one. Then it's the Panthers, the Packers, and the Cardinals. So second best in the AFC. They are currently, after week 10, before the rest of the games are played, Second in points per game. Second in scoring defense. They have allowed 16.1 points per game. The only team better, the Bills. You know, these are some of the stats that we're not hearing because they're a little bit more in the weeds, but these are little things that that tell us a lot about what the Patriots are doing well. And it's kind of a classic second half of the dynasty type Bill Belichick defense turnovers, scoring by the defense, interceptions, and just doing a lot of their best work in the red zone. They do allow a little bit to go on between the 20s. They always have, but they've their pass rush has gotten a lot better, which has helped them a great deal on that front, right? There's, they're much, much better than they had been the last few years. And again, they're doing their best work in the red zone. They're keeping players out of the end zone. They're creating turnovers and they're capitalizing on those turnovers. And it's pretty clear that they're doing it not just in fluke ways against specific teams or bad teams. They can do it against everyone. They can do it against quarterbacks like Justin Herbert. They can do it on the road. And that is incredibly impressive. Of course, the only problem is that the Bills defense is just even that much better statistically. And so they are unfortunately in the division with the other best defense in the AFC. So that's all building up to what is could potentially be the game of the year for the conference in week 12 against the Bills. Now, it will probably be one of the games of the year, regardless of whether the Patriots beat the Titans in Foxborough in week 11. But if they do, if they do beat the Titans in week 11 in Foxborough to go to eight and four, and they go to Buffalo at eight and four with the division on the line at that point, who boy. I mean, this team really is over the next two games. By the time week 12 is over, there is a chance that people are talking about the Patriots as a Super Bowl favorite. If the Patriots beat the Titans at home in Foxborough and then the Bills on the road, how are they not being talked about as a Super Bowl favorite? Considering the, where the Bills defense is at, considering the fact that the Titans currently have the number one seed in the AFC. And again, I'm looking at everything and I'm trying to figure out where are their major weaknesses. Is their offense explosive? No, but that run game is incredibly hard to stop. And when you are able to run the ball that effectively, it just opens things up for the passing game. And we've seen it. Mac Jones can be effective on basically every throw he makes. His chemistry is getting better with those receivers and the tight ends every week. There's no reason I think it's going to go backwards. And with that defense, he doesn't need to score 35 points a game. We've seen it. Matt just needs to complete 24 to 25 passes per game, not turn the ball over in bad situations, let the run game do their job, 
and let the defense cook. He's in a perfect position to continue doing what he's doing. So I don't know. I don't want to wish any weeks away. I don't want this season to go by any faster than it already is, but it is crazy to think about where this team could be at in the next two weeks, depending on how things go. And even if they do lose one of those two games, still eight and five, not too shabby in the back end of the season, lots of winnable games still. So who knows? I'm telling you right now, week 11 and week 12 are going to be some of the most exciting weeks that Patriots, uh, that Patriots fans have had to watch football in the last few years. And I, for one, am really optimistic and excited to watch it. And I think that, you know, like I said earlier in the season, when you have a rookie quarterback and your defense is elite, things can happen. Ask Ben Roethlisberger, ask Mark Sanchez, who was no, nowhere near the type of quarterback that Mac Jones is. These are guys that won playoff games as rookies. These are guys who played in AFC championship games as rookies. Why not us, right? Thank you for joining me. I appreciate you guys. I hope that this was a fun listen and that you learned a little bit more uh, about where the team is at right now. And you're even more excited for that game against the Titans in week 11 and the game in Buffalo in week 12. Enjoy the rest of the games in week 10, a relaxing Sunday and Monday for everybody. Hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at Tanya Ray Fox at shameless TRF. You can find me at both of those handles. Oh, as always, DM, comment, debate. Let's do it. And I look forward to talking to you next week. Bye.